Oh, that is a wonderful spot to start. Anywho, this is Jeff the Christian Gamer bringing you the Xenoblade Chronicles 100% walkthrough. I'm going to begin at the beginning. I'm going to go through the character selection screen and uh, make sure we get through all that fun stuff. Then we will play the first chapter all the way through, and that will be the end of this first video. So here we go. For those of you who did not know, I have previously tried on more than one occasion to get a set of Xenoblade Chronicles videos put up. However, things happen. Most accurately, I could not figure out how to get my sound to work the first time through. So, basically, I've got that problem ironed out, or so I believe, and we will continue with the first video all over again. Now, I had original... Blah, wow, okay. <clears throat> tongue-tied. I had originally planned to do a 100% walkthrough. I had about 150 to 200 hours played on that 100% walkthrough, and then I found out that there was a quest that I was doing that was impossible to complete. So, yeah, that's the reason why this uh, series didn't get off the ground much sooner. More importantly, that's the reason why I uh, had to restart. Hey. Okay can't finish the quest, you can't 100% clear it. Go figure. Love this video. If anybody uh, happens to not know the reference made here, this is the uh, a piece of Voyager 1, which was a spaceship put out there by NASA in order to, in the event some sentient life exists, we would be able to communicate with them by way of conveying to them the instructions for building a record player and uh, playing a record that we included on this particular vessel and uh, yeah I find it ironic that this particular uh, game references that specific ship in the initial credits here. Uh, something I always thought about when they mentioned Explorer 1 to me was that wouldn't the logical thing to do in the event of a hostile alien uh, finding this vessel would be for them to reverse engineer it and figure out how to destroy us? I, I, I thought that was the first thing I thought. I know, cynical mind, terrible. Anyway, yeah, it's the first thought I had, and uh, so happened that this game kind of said, hey, you were, yeah, that happened. So, I know I ramble. I also enjoy the strange and really cool symmetry that you see here in these uh, this particular alien race here. I do not know which is which. I know ganglion are involved. July 4 AD. The Earth was caught in a great battle between unknown alien forces. Their weapons were terrifying and powerful beyond human reckoning. Our planet As I'm watching this, I have every confidence in the fact that Nintendo is a wonderfully advanced gaming company in that their system, while less powerful than its competitors, still manages to pull off graphics equally impressive. At least in my opinion. I haven't seen anything this graphically stunning on uh, From every major the Wii U before, and it looks just on par, if not on equal terms, with the graphics of Xbox One and PS4. Just my honest opinion. Just saying. Maybe you're not pushing as many polygons, but the art style has just as much impact on the value of the graphics the as the, the white whale pixel count after leaving earth behind we spent two years wandering in space searching we thought of ourselves as the lucky ones the pioneers who would settle in the world but our past caught up with us literally The alien blitz was unrelenting. If not for the efforts of a lone hero, we would never have survived. Our ship took heavy damage. We lost control. With our 
For one side note, I do apologize if I so happen to sniffle or clear my throat. I am currently working with the uh, evils that are a cold. Colorado is a very snowy place and also a very cold place, and I don't know why I didn't like that. Look at you. Since then, two months have passed. Alright, character creation. Go go gadget character. A fun fact, whenever I play an RPG, I tend to maximize my character size for two reasons. One, they are easier to see with comparison with, you know, everybody else. And uh, two, it's just, I don't know, I just like feeling taller than everybody else. Yeah, go figure. I would actually save the changes, you know. Just on a mission. So cute. She said I had to get back mommy's phone. And so she did. Gonna make this character as similar as possible to my original.
Attention, external access confirmed. Disengaging stasis in 10 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Releasing hatch. Please stand clear. Hey there. Looks like you're all in one piece. Careful. Just take it nice and slow, okay? Your senses will need time to reactivate. Your pod is the only one around that landed intact. Good thing I found you. My name's Elma. You want to tell me yours? You don't even remember your own name? It must be the stasis hangover. That's not good. Just try and focus, all right? Good, there we go. What else you remember? It'll come. In the meantime, I'll get you up to speed here as best I can. How are your limbs? Can you move? We'll take it easy while you shake the stasis out of your system. One step at a time, all right? First things first, you'll be needing a weapon. There you go. All right, let's get going. All right, person I've never met before, I'm gonna hand you a weapon and walk into a dangerous forest with you. For those of you who don't like to watch the cinematics I will probably figure out at some point or another how to skip those um, or set a link to be able to skip those in the YouTube video itself uh, in fact those of you who happen to know how to do something of that nature uh, it would be awesome if you go ahead and comment in there so I can get the video updated as soon as possible yeah Most of the white whale's life pods didn't survive the crash, like this one. You're one of the lucky few. Right. You don't even remember the white whale, do you? You know, the L002? The ship we escaped Earth on? You remember Earth, right? Planet Earth. Your homeworld. Or rather, it used to be anyway. Unfortunately, it was caught in a battle between two alien forces. And destroyed.
ring any bells? Don't feel bad. It's one memory I'd like to forget. I know. It's been following me for a while now. I didn't want to alarm you, but we're going to need to defend ourselves. You up to the task? Yeah. All righty, head on to the bathroom. Fond of this particular combat scheme. If anybody played the original Xenoblade Chronicles, it is very similar to that. It is slightly revamped. In my opinion, a little better overall. It's more fluid. Hmm. You're not half bad. There's plenty of work back in the city for someone who knows how to handle a weapon, you know. Then you're interested. In that case, I might have just the job for you. But anyway, we can talk more details later. For now, let's keep moving. They're what? awfully forward. Flame grenade! Take the initiative! Close in! And now it's my turn! managed to get mortally wounded in the first two battles of the game. starting to let up, just in time for sunrise. 
Follow me. I promise you're gonna love this. One of these days I'm gonna research why they do that whole shaky camera thing. It's supposed to make it feel more real. I've never enjoyed it. In all the movies and all the games that I've seen it in, it's like, oh, a shaky camera, yay. Wild, huh? They're all indigenous, as far as we can tell. We need to learn to play nice with these guys if we're going to try and coexist together. I love how good a job they did with making sure the world of Mira felt like there was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of life and epic viewpoints and all that kind of jazz. Visually speaking, this is my favorite game on the Wii U. In case you didn't notice by my previous statements. We call this planet Mira. You won't find it on any star chart. But it's our new home. Recognize the habitat unit? That's where we're headed. Watch yourself. That first step's a doozy. We can jump if you like. You could handle the fall. But the indigens down there are another story. Some big, some mean, all nasty. Given our options, the high road here would be the safer way to go, relatively speaking. That said, whichever way you want to go, I'll follow your lead. You decide. Oh, decisions. I remember the first time I played through this game, definitely <clears throat> went the more dangerous route. And that didn't work out so well for me, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the safe route this time around. See what that gives me. Strike! Slice! 
and strike. Ready? Too bad. Spectacularly done. Nice work. on any planet. Ugh. Yeah, first playthrough on this game. That flying thing scared the bejesus out of me. I'm attacking! Move in! Now it's my turn! Looks a lot bigger up close, doesn't it? And this was just the habitat unit. The White Whale was one hell of a ship. Until it all came crashing down, at least. That's the West Gate. 
It's closed off now for security reasons. But we've repurposed a freight elevator that will get us inside. <laughs> It's a shame we had to settle near so much wildlife. Luckily, some species aren't so hostile, but they aren't necessarily friendly either. I've come to learn that there's a fine line between self-defense and provoking a fight. We need to walk that line. All right, let's head in. Who knows? Maybe seeing the inside will jog your memory. This looks like some sort of strange alien creature to anybody else. Just so. Every time I see that building, I think the final countdown. Not too shabby, huh? For a giant beach spaceship, anyway. But, like it or not, this place is our home now. We took the name from the city it was modeled after back on Earth. We call it New Los Angeles. Welcome to NLA. Oh. 
And so it was that another survivor came to join our band of refugees. Together, we resolved to forge a new way of life here on Mira, come what may. New LA was our beautiful lie to ourselves. Truth is, we were adrift, heading into the unknown. Our native home was gone, swallowed in a shroud of light. And our future was uncertain. We had no idea what fate lay in store for us. Only that we had to keep living in order to see it. Obligatory title sequence. How about a quick tour of the facilities to refresh your memory? Let's start with your living quarters. Follow me. citizens of New Los Angeles. Good day. This is your director general, Maurice Chausson. Today, I once again come to you with news I am truly delighted to share. Yesterday, we repatriated ten more white whale crew members. These fellow pioneers will rejoin our ranks as citizens of NLA, bringing with them skills and know-how that will bolster our ability to survive and indeed flourish here in our new home. This, of course, is only the latest success in our continuing efforts. Director General? Since when? For the rescue and recovery Two of days all ago, ma'am. From political aide to director general in just a few weeks. At this rate, he'll be emperor by next month. Irina? Gwyn? Nice work out there, ma'am. Right. Introductions. Irina Akulov, Gwyn Evans. This one of the survivors, Colonel? The survivor. I only found a single pod intact at Starfall Basin. Wait, what? What happened to ten more crew members? Come on, seriously? Shosan was never one to let the truth get in the way of a good speech. Still, every last survivor counts. You can call me Arena. I'm with the Interceptors. Me too. Same division. You can call me Mr. Evans. Or just Gwyn. The three of us were in the Coalition Forces together, specifically the Special Operations Heavy Armor Training Unit, a.k.a. the Skeleton Crew. I was a colonel and Arena a lieutenant. Gwyn was a more recent recruit. Of course, I keep telling them we don't need those old ranks anymore now that we're here. You're still colonel to me, ma'am. No reorg will ever change that. And that's not about chain of command either. It's about respect. You've earned it. And the award for best ass kiss goes to... Uh, <clears throat> well, I'd remind you both the ma'ams aren't necessary if I thought you'd listen. All right, ma'am. We should be getting back to work. Until next time, Colonel. Right. We should be going, too. The administrative district isn't far. That's where you'll be calling home. For now, anyway.
can't remember if they go into much detail about this, but uh, I do remember them mentioning the fact that Lin was working on a flight system. But clearly, the scales that uh, people made to defend against the ganglion forces back on Earth could fly, so it makes me think, why are they developing a system that already exists? Just saying. The eight plot holes. Look, I know what exhaust smells like, and it was exhaust in the cockpit. Just check the ductwork, would you? Oh, I'm checking. I just seriously doubt... Hey, look at that! The intake exhaust bypass is reversed. Oh man, it's a good thing I caught that. You caught that? You're the one who cleared me to fly! Everything okay? It's not like you to flub a flight check, Lynn. Good thing you had a rugged pilot like Doug at the controls. Oh, hey, Elma. How'd it go out there? And would this be one of the you-know-whos? Cool. I'm Lin Lee Koo, mechanic and top all-around fix-it gal for Blade. She's 13, and I know, she looks young, and she is young, but trust me. She's one of our top talents. Most of the time, that is. Most of the time. Anyway, you guys heading back to the barracks? Yeah. Why do you ask? As long as you're here, why don't I take you on the transport? It's a great way to see the city. I'll give you the grand tour. That sounds like a great idea. All right, Doug, I think that'll be all for today. You can clean up here and dock the skell. What? Don't mind the exhaust. I'll take care of it tomorrow. Don't mind it? Wait, why am I cleaning up your mess in the first place? Lynn! Lynn! Everything from up here. It beats walking, that's for sure. The best way to see NLA. I never get tired of this view. It's like a different city every time. It's certainly come a long way in the last few weeks. But there's still so much to be done. One day at a time. Speaking of which, we don't really have time for a full pleasure cruise here. Why don't you give us the express tour, Lynn? Just the highlights. Okay, you got it. <clears throat> New LA is divided into four districts. We departed from the industrial district, where Doug and I were conducting the flight test. It has food production, skill development, you know, industries and stuff. It's also where the West Gate is located, remember? Expect to pass through there fairly often. 
The only other gate out of the city is in the administrative district. I'm skipping ahead. <clears throat> Next is the commercial district. Restaurants, galleries, cafes, clothing, groceries, you name it. It's a veritable shopping paradise! The CD is the closest thing to a downtown we've got. It can actually get pretty crowded sometimes. Well, by NLA standards anyway. Day or night, the best and only bargains on the planet. To your right, the residential district. Housing, housing, and more housing. Well, plus a nice park and the cathedral. If you're ever looking for quiet time alone, or want to relax and unwind with a good book, that's the spot. Right? The park is my favorite place to just zone out and chill. And last but not least, our destination, the Administrative District, the nerve center at the heart of NLA. Note the distinct dual-level structure here. The upper level holds our Administrative Tower, home to Blade HQ and the government. Not to mention Armory Alley, as well as the barracks where we live. The lower level there is a hangar complex for scale maintenance and repairs. And this concludes our tour. We will be landing shortly. Thanks, Lynn. We'll save the rest of orientation for once we're back at the barracks. Enjoy your stay in the administrative district, and thank you for flying Linley Airlines. Right. Let's get you over to the barracks. Then I should file my report. They'll be eager to hear the details on how I found you, I'm sure. Well then, we better not keep them waiting. The barracks are pretty close, actually. They're set up just behind the giant blade tower here. That road there wraps around the left side and leads right to it. We'll pass through Armory Alley, but let's not get sidetracked, okay? We can check it out later. And here we are, the Blade Barracks. Consider yourself our guest until we finish getting you registered. Feel free to come and go as you please. I think I can answer that one. So, you must be the latest rescue. Secretary Nagi! Miss Koo, chipper as always, I see. What can I say? Pep is my middle name. I ran into Doug Barrett on the way here, and he didn't seem quite so upbeat. Anything about today's flight I should know? No. Nothing to worry about. Good. Be sure it stays that way. More importantly, Elma, you found another one. Excellent work out there. Just doing my job, Mr. Secretary. Now, as for officially registering our new citizen here... Why don't we talk inside? There's a lot of ground to cover. It could take some time. Ah, yes, of course. Forgive me. 
You must be weary from the stasis and your journey back to us. Please, after you. I'll put on some tea. Allow me to formally introduce myself. My name is Kentaro Nagi. You may remember me as Captain of the White Whale, but now I serve as Secretary of Defense here for New L.A. The Provisional Government has charged me with keeping the peace, so all military and police matters fall under my jurisdiction. He's also my superior officer. And he'd be an excellent person to talk to when you're ready to start looking for work. What about a job right here with Blade? She seems capable. Let's give it a little more time. At least until she knows enough to be able to make an informed decision. She seems to be suffering from some form of memory loss. Memory loss? From the stasis? She could barely remember her name, and nothing at all about what happened to Earth or the White Whale. I see. Though, come to think of it, the entire lot of us have only been on this planet for, what, two months? It shouldn't take very long to get caught up. My thoughts exactly. Well then, where should we begin? It started at the end, two years ago. The end of Earth. The casualty of a battle between two hyper-advanced alien civilizations. Their technology and weapons were beyond our comprehension. We were like infants, naked, powerless. The Earth was reduced to ash and blown away. I still wonder if I hadn't been there. Maybe all of this could have somehow been avoided. No one can know that, Elma. What we do know is without you, there'd have been no Project Exodus, and no escape for any of us. Did it go perfectly? No. But we are here, and we are alive. We survived. <laughs> so yes, Project Exodus. Once we learned the Earth might be threatened, we needed a plan to preserve all her various life forms. That plan was the Earth Life Colonization Project, otherwise known as Project Exodus. Those of us who escaped on the White Whale spent over two years wandering in space. Two hard years. But we clung to our mission, find a habitable planet, and settle there. We had no idea how long it would take. Or that the decision would eventually be made for us. The Xenoforms found us again, and, well, it wasn't a happy reunion. Earth wasn't enough. They wanted humanity destroyed. For better and for worse, we were close to planet Mira when we lost control of the White Whale. Inertia and gravity took it from there. The ship had taken way too much damage to survive entering the atmosphere intact. We had no choice. We channeled all the power we had left to soft land the habitat. Once the dust cleared, we set to work transforming it into its current state. Searching for survivors, establishing Blade, Installing the provisional government. Basically, making it a sustainable city. Blade is an acronym. Builders of a legacy after the destruction of Earth. Quite fitting, I think. It's a relatively new organization. Up there in space, we had plenty of provisions, 
and a crew trained to handle the limited amount of situations we might encounter in our travels. But of course, all that changed after we lost most of our ship and came crashing down here on Mira. We needed food, water, search and rescue teams, surveyors, police. The list goes on and on. It was too much for the provisional government to manage on its own, so Blade was born. The idea was to have one central organization with different disciplines to fill these various roles. Its core was pulled from the Coalition military, so it's mostly former soldiers. But fighting isn't our most important duty. Right now we have a single top priority that supersedes all others. The search for and recovery of the Lifehold. Take a look at this. The White Whale was designed to carry an exceedingly large number of passengers, all of them held in stasis. All housed in a structure called the Lifehold. This is a complete schematic of that facility. Only essential personnel were conscious and active for the journey from Earth the flight crew, maintenance engineers, and of course, some military so we could defend ourselves if necessary. But the vast majority were in the lifehold, are in the lifehold. With any luck, they're all still there, in stasis, waiting to be rescued. But there's a problem. We now know the lifehold broke apart along with the rest of the ship when we came down on Mira. What we don't know is exactly where all the pieces landed. Not very comforting, I know. Blade's top priority now is locating the missing units. Ah, uh, yes. All citizens of NLA are required to register their name, age, and occupation. We also ask you report any personal assets and take a short survey regarding your current state of health. All purely as a precaution, I'm sure you understand. As the caretakers of humanity's survival, we all have certain responsibilities. And hey, it's not all bad. Registering gets you access to all kinds of public services. In any case, I'm sure this is all a lot to digest. You'll be wanting some time. Ms. Koo. Even I'm tired of hearing myself speak. Why don't you take our guest out for some air? Perhaps a tour of the administrative district? Yes, sir. Come on, we'll keep this briefing brief. got everything a blade would need, all in one place, without any extra fluff. Get a load of that skill. Even the way that they walk is so cool. Oh yeah, work it, baby. Mm -mm -mm. Now this girl gets it! Aren't they just the coolest? Just everything about them! The lasers, the force fields, the bipedal and vehicular transformations! You ever have that dream where you're inside one and it's just transforming over and over and over? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Actually, I, uh, I don't normally show this to people, but I've been working on some Skell fanfiction. Hold on, I'll just pull it up here one sec. Lynn? Oh, uh, right. Sorry. Originally, scales were developed as a defensive measure to counter potential alien threats. It wasn't enough to save Earth, though. 
We were outnumbered and outgunned. Still, just look around you. New LA has gone from basically nothing to this in just two short months. We could never have come so far so fast without scale technology. I'd love to get you into one to see for yourself, but it's not that simple. Well, yeah, duh. For one thing, only blades are allowed to pilot scales. And even then, you need a license. These aren't toys we're talking about. They're complex machines with powerful weapons. And they're a precious resource. We only have so many of them to go around. So yes, as you might imagine, the certification process is a fairly rigorous one. I'm sure you're thinking, where do I sign up for the test? But it's not that simple. They choose you, not the other way around. You can't just walk in the front door and volunteer. There is some criteria. The details are largely hidden, but basically HQ only allows the cream of the crop to take the test. Blades who go above and beyond in their duties and for the people of New LA in general. So what do you say? If you become a blade and work hard, I'm sure it'll only be a matter of time before they tap you on the shoulder. Speaking of work, that reminds me. Why don't we check out the mission control board first? That's where we take on our assignments. Good call. Let's head on over. So this is mission control. We don't have a dispatch system yet, so Blades usually choose their own assignments. Everyone comes here and selects from the missions available on the board. And it's not just official Blade tasks. Anyone with a request is free to post here. Businesses, citizens, whoever. Yeah, it's basically how anything gets done in New LA, so the board is constantly updating. Just about every Blade will stop by here at some point in their shift. It's like our second home. You'll always find a number of blades around here, blowing off steam or browsing mission control for their next assignment. Whenever I get freed up, I'll stop here first thing to check for any missions I might be suited for. Likewise. And if the assignment seems too tough to handle solo, that's what the scout console is for. We should show you that next. Hey, who's giving this tour anyway? We also have the scout console if the assignment seems too tough to handle solo. And uh, Elma just said that, didn't she? Hey. Ta-da! The Blade Scout Console. When the going gets tough, the tough go to the Scout Console. You know, to get tougher. If you do end up joining us, you'll quickly realize just how important this little kiosk is. A lot of the mission control assignments are too much for any one blade to handle. They tend to call for multiple members with specialized knowledge or unique skills. This console lets you search for and recruit other blades to fill those roles for just such an occasion. You can't spell blade without team. Sort of. Anyway, awesome, right? So you're ready to join up? Hang on, Lynn. Take it easy, would you? What? I'm just saying you'd have to be some kind of an idiot not to want to join Blade. Or maybe a crazy person. Oh. And here I thought you might be pressuring our guest. Apology accepted. Now, how about a little shopping? And I'm not talking about the stuff over in the commercial district. I'm talking about Armory Alley. So this street's what we call Armory Alley. Blades can requisition equipment from any of the vendors here. I won't lie, most Blade members face danger on a daily basis. Having the latest gear isn't about impressing your friends. It's a matter of survival. True enough. And that goes not only for your personal armor and weapons, what we call ground gear, but for skell equipment as well. You can even buy whole skells. Can you imagine owning your own skell? 
Huh? Oh, right, the door. I think all that's left is the heart of Blade itself. Blade Tower. Hey! So yeah, Blade Tower. When we come here, it's usually to stop by Blade HQ. The higher-ups, like Secretary Nagi and Commander Vandom, will spend most of their day here. The government leaders, too. They're based in the tower. Guys like our new Director General Maurice Chausson, for example. Blade sometimes report to the leadership here after we finish key assignments. You'll want to remember this place. And that about does it for our tour. So, what do you think? Pretty amazing setup, right? You can't wait to join Blade, right? Okay, Lynn, seriously, that's enough. We're not here to make a sales pitch. We just want you to have all the facts so you can make an informed decision to join us, or not. Now that you've seen where and how we work, hopefully it made a good impression, but your decision will be just that, your decision. In any case, let's head back to the barracks. Secretary Nagi will be waiting. Not sure, but I think they want me to join Blade. <sighs> And with that startling revelation, I'm going to call that the end of this particular video. Next video, I will go into Chapter 2 and potentially a couple of quests. At any rate, this is Jeff the Christian Gamer.